in England in 1919 in a place just outside London called Wimbledon. I was a dancer, by the way. I loved dancing. It's all I wanted to do. Before I ever went to a dancing class, I loved dancing. My younger sister went before I did. They never even thought that I would like to go. And, but after she went, they could see how much I loved it because I used to take her so that I could watch her. And when she practiced at home, I picked it up from her. So when I went, I already was able to do all that because I loved it so much. I think about 16, I joined a show that went on tour, a show called The Fleets Lit Up, and had a ball with it. I was finally a professional dancer. They called us the Five Willoughby Sisters, and that's how I started with the shows that entertained the troops. The government put out shows called ENSA, Entertainment's National Service Association. We toured around England for a couple of years, and then in, I think it was 1943, I joined a show that went overseas. I had left the group of dancers, and I now danced with another girl. Her name was Carol Gray, and my name was Peggy Desmond. We went to North Africa, the two of us. The first morning there, we went out for a walk, and we're walking down the street, and along came these two American soldiers. Oh, oh what this handsome guy. And I said to Carol, I think we should talk to them. She said, well, well, you don't know them. I said, I know, but I'm going to say hello anyway. So when we got closer, I called out and said, hello, how are you? And of course, they were laughed, and they were thrilled to death. And that one of them was the man I married. My partner, Carol, she couldn't believe I did this. I would talk to two strays, especially two foreigners, walking along the street. She said to me, Peggy, you just can't do that. I said, well, let's just wait and see. <laughs> Al and I just hit it off right off the bat. And we did two shows that night. And by the way, he was there at both shows. We kept in contact all through the years. But during those years, I traveled overseas all the time, sometimes going to a different place every night. Most days you went to a different um, air, a place every day to do a show, either to the Air Force or the Army or somewhere. But then if there were a garrison theater where the regular army was stationed, we loved it because we'd go there and stay in the same theater for a whole week and they would bring the troops in. Instead of changing clothes on the side of the stage, you had an actual dressing room to go and change your clothes. <laughs> Otherwise, wherever the troops were, we went out to the troops. Most of the time we traveled in lorries and sat on the hard seats. <laughs> but it was fun. We, we loved doing it, frankly. When you hear the warning signals, take cover at once. London was bombed badly. And of course, I toured most of the time, but between shows I would go home, of course. And wherever we were, there were bomb shelters. And because all over England, I mean, it was that you were right there in the midst of the bombing. And but it's funny, you get used to it. It's um, another day. Oh, yes, yes, did you have a bad night? Oh, yes, we didn't get much to sleep. But, you know, it was like the night before. That was the kind of life. You, you, it's like everything else, you get used to it. Oh, there's another raid. Let's get down into the um, shelters. You knew night after night you were going down in the L raid shelters. So a lot of times, if you knew it was going to start early, you packed, you fixed your meal and took it down there too. And you would take books, you'd, you know, you'd read, and you got to know a lot of people. But you didn't know how many years this was going on. So you, they almost had to have a, a life that you could live, and if you wanted to, go there and sleep. If we were in the middle of a show, and they were bombing, and as long as it wasn't overhead, but you knew in a hurry how pretty close they were too. But unless they were really close, we just went on with the show. But it was sleeping in a different place every night, which 
I didn't mind. I loved it. It was my life. I couldn't imagine spending the war any other way because I did the one thing I loved doing. And frankly, I spent most of my life doing it. I was in Italy when the war ended. When the troops came home, I came home with them. And that was the end of my wartime service. And of course, as soon as I got home, the first letter I had said, well, now the war's over and you're home. When are you coming to America to marry me?